Hello, 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 you lovely listeners. Welcome back to Luciano's Logic over here at News That You Can Trust. In today's video, we are having a conversation with a very neat person, a humanist. Hi, Luciano. It's nice to meet you. I'm super excited to be here on your show, and I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to talk about my views with your audience. Oh, absolutely, Mr. Logic. We're thrilled to have you on. I wanted to ask if you could explain in your own words what humanism is for you, and if it affects any of your views, how does it affect those views outside of things that people normally think about when they think about things like morality? Absolutely. So for me, what humanism is, is it's a system of thought that without requiring the belief in the supernatural or in the gods, though also without excluding those ideas and beliefs, focuses on human beings and on our potential for goodness. For me, humanism is a system of thoughts and of ideas that allows me to come to moral conclusions without requiring any belief in any deities or in any sort of supernatural creatures. And for me, humanism does affect other parts of my life and other parts of my comprehensive worldview. Humanism does influence my political ideas and my political beliefs, though I'm not going to say what some other people say, that humanism requires someone to be progressive because I feel like that attaches an unnecessary political label to humanism that is exclusive. And that's something that I don't want to be. I want people to feel like they can have a range of different sets of ideas and beliefs and also be humanists and that they can feel welcome in humanistic spaces because I want people to have critical conversations about a range of different ideas and I want them to be open to changing them. And I feel like associating certain things that I don't really feel are necessary to humanism makes that harder for people. But in my case, my humanism does influence my political beliefs, and it's part of what makes me be the young progressive that I am, though I'm not going to say that that's the case for everyone, because it just isn't. Well, you see, Mr. Logic, you gave me a lot to think about just now, but something that I think is especially interesting is that you said, without excluding theism and theistic beliefs, and I want to know, does that mean that you think that someone can be theistic and also be a humanist? Because I feel like there are a lot of people who might not understand that or who might disagree, if you understand what I'm saying. Absolutely. I think that there are many theists who are also humanists. And I think that most people, regardless of whether or not they identify as humanists, are capable of humanistic acts and capable of humanistic actions. And that's part of the reason why I think it's important that we don't attach unnecessary labels. And I also think it's worth pointing out that historically there are a range of different traditions of humanism. There is a theistic humanistic tradition. There is a secular humanistic tradition. And there are also congregations humanistic spaces, wherein people are not necessarily believers themselves, but they go to communities that are like churches, and they go to communities that provide much of the same sorts of benefits of being part of a theistic congregation of some sorts. And I think that all of that matters. I think that all of that's valid. And I think that all of that is good. I think that the diversity of humanistic trains of thought and humanistic traditions is something remarkable about humanism. And it makes me sad that people aren't often willing to have the sorts of conversations that we could be willing to have and that we should be having about the history behind humanism, even in its modern form today. Thank you for that, Mr. Logic. I really appreciate you being so open about what you think humanism means and about how humanism manifests itself for you. Now, I wanted to go back to something else that you said. You talked a little bit about how humanism influences your personal political views. Can you tell me a little bit more about that if you feel comfortable sharing that? Because I know not everyone does. Sure. So I'm someone who is pretty far to the left, especially in the context of American politics. I have a bit of a range of different political beliefs, so I can't say that I belong to any particular political movement or political ideology, aside from the fact that I fall squarely into the left. I value freedom, I value economic reforms, I value labor reforms, I value people's lives being valued above dollars, and I think that people should try to live lives filled with dignity, regardless of the sorts of jobs that they have, and that the government should step in and help everyone live lives that are filled with happiness, no matter what sorts of jobs they happen to have. 
And all of these things are at least partially informed by the fact that I am a humanist and by the fact that I value human life more than I value the economy and more than I value a lot of other things. For me, being a humanist is about seeing the dignity of human life and it's about trying to create a world wherein people can be happy regardless of what their jobs happen to be, regardless of how much money they happen to have, and regardless of whether or not they are in the majority in a lot of different things, as long as all of their worldviews and all the components of their faith and all the components of their political beliefs revolve around other people and themselves being happy and living just and dignified lives. I feel like that vibes very well with what you said earlier about when you were describing what humanism is for you. And I wanted to see how it is that you think that we can develop more humanists and also that we can help people realize that maybe they themselves are humanists and they just never knew it. Do you have any ideas on that? Absolutely. I think that if we become more aware of the different traditions of humanism, including theistic humanism, and we have more conversations about what humanism looks like and what humanism feels like, I think that we're going to help people realize that they themselves were probably always humanists, but they just never realized it. Another thing I think that we could focus on, and it's something that I think we would be very wise to focus on, is showing people what humanism looks like and feels like. Because the reality is, people choose to be humanists every time they reject an idea that hurts people. And an example of this that can be really easy to think of is when people who are parents who are homophobic realize that their children are queer, and they originally choose their ideas over their kids, over their family members, over their relatives, but then when they see their family members, their children, their neighbors being happy, and they choose to accept those people over their old ideas, that's what humanism looks like. That's something that helped me realize that I was a humanist, because despite the fact that I am queer, I wasn't always accepting of queer people. But eventually, I chose to accept people over ideas, and I chose to accept people over beliefs, and that was something that pushed me very far along my journey to humanism. I think that if more people learn to articulate that, and if this is something that more people become comfortable with talking about, I think that would help us a long way, and I think that would make us much better humanistic communicators. And I think that this is something that we should be doing. I think it's something that we should be encouraging our communities to do. And I think that we should be celebrating when theists start to move towards humanism. Because the reality is, we don't have to agree with theists when it comes to things like theism, but we share this world and we should be looking for ways to make this world a better place together and to make this world a safer place for everyone. I think that that's one of the things that most informs and most moves me along my journey towards being someone who is as close to the most humanistic person as I can be, which is something that I want to do. I want to be someone who lives and breathes humanism because I view humanism as the best philosophy, as the best train of thought, as the best system of thought, and as the best source of ideas and beliefs. Those were truly beautiful words, and I would like to say thank you so much for being on my program. Now that the interview is just about to end, I'm going to let you have the last word. I want to know, and my audience would like to know, is there anything that you would like to say to us, any message that you would like to leave us with? Because I know that I'm dying to hear any of your parting thoughts. Once again, thank you so much for coming on to my program. I hope that we can talk again real soon, Mr. Logic. First of all, Luciano, allow me to say this. Thank you so much for having me on your wonderful program. I am so ecstatic to be here, and I cannot wait to see what it is that your viewers will say and what they think about this little program that we put together. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak about humanism and about my political beliefs. That's honestly fantastic. You're doing something wonderful by having on a range of voices here, and I'm excited to see who you have on in the future. Now what I'm going to say, as I suppose my final parting message is this, being a humanist is an act of joy, it's an act of liberation, and it's an act of putting your fellow human beings above yourself. There's honestly nothing difficult about that. It's not difficult to prioritize other people's happiness above the importance of your own ideas, your own beliefs, or your own dogmas. I know that to a lot of people this might seem difficult. I understand that this is something that fills people with anxiety and it's something that makes people nervous. But the reality is, 
a lot of us have lived lives where we've had moments of humanism and identifying as a humanist makes our tent bigger and it makes humanism become more common. And one of the things that comes with making humanism more common is making justice more common. It's making happiness more common. And those are things that I think we can all agree that we want. And I am here to say that humanism has a very wide tent. It's true that in that tense, there's little groups of people who are in the secular group, there's groups of people who are in the theistic group, there's groups of people who are in the congregational groups, and all of those groups are wonderful. But what matters is that we're all in the same tense, we're all here together, and even though we may disagree on some things, we recognize that we come from the same species, we are ultimately the same group of people, and we can all get farther by helping each other. For me, that's what it means to be a humanist. It's about helping other people, and it's about helping people live lives of happiness, joy, and peace. And I hope that that's a message that resonates with anyone who watches this, regardless of whether or not they agree with me politically, or if they are the same type of humanist as I am, because I'm a secular humanist, and the reality is, I don't know if I'm ever going to believe in the gods, but I do know that I believe in happiness. I believe in joy, and I believe in creating a better world for everyone. Those are my beliefs, and I'm happy to have an opportunity to talk to them. I will talk to you all real soon, and I hope that you share with us what you thought of this very different video. Until next time.